thank you, Ajahn, for the insightful sharing. Um, I'm just wondering how can um, animals uh, have better rebirth? Um, is it only by receiving merits? I mean, I have a dog, right? Um, aside my dog, I'm just thinking about other animals as well. So how do they? Yeah, it's uh, difficult for animal to do some merit, uh, some wholesome action, but they can do. You know, like sometimes animal they uh, they do for their kid. You know, they, uh, sometimes they feed other uh, dog, puppy maybe from other parents. You know, they come and you know, they they sometimes once in a while they able to do some merit, but it's not uh, the ability for them to do merit is limited to their consciousness. You know, they kind of they have that limitation. So that's why the Buddha say when you are reborn as animal, you should use the, the word 500 times. <laughs> 500 is probably a long time, basically. It might not be exactly 500, but because when you become animal, it's almost like you are in that uh, it's a delusion state where you are very uh, you born out of the moha, the, the ignorance state. Uh, but you know, after a while, then then. You, the karma that you done in the past might also come back as well. You know, some people born an animal for for short period of time when they when they act up uh, karma after uh, basically support them. Yeah. So we have this uh, this story about this um, even the, maybe the the monk who are uh, practicing uh, quite good, but he. He was offered uh, the piece of very, very beautiful, very refined piece of cloth, actually, uh, for for him to make robes. So on that night, he basically attached him. is attached to that robe, and he died of maybe some some uh, some problem with digestion or whatever. So he died. But because his his mind is fit with this robe, he become reborn as a insect in these robes yeah. so and the buddha know this thing he has his psychic power so normally when the monk die then his his uh, belonging will be distributed in the sangha you know who get the bow who get the robe but because the buddha know this so he come and stop the distribution he said, uh, wait a minute this robe don't don't distribute just keep it there so he keep it for seven days and there's a kind of the lifespan of that insect is only last for seven days. But when he died from that, he's, he's, he's been doing a lot of merit by being a monk. But he just, just last mistake before he died, he just attached to these ropes and he reborn his insect. But then the previous karma that he do accumulate during the monk's life, he just come back and he, now he reborn in heaven. Yeah. So this is a, the, the example of yeah you you may be unfortunate to be reborn in that but you also do a lot of karma before that this is not final see see the human being we do a lot of karma some good some bad some wholesome some unwholesome so when if the the wholesome uh, karma manifest happen to manifest at that time then you can basically uh, real and that's why this concept of referring the merit Actually, when we referring the mer merit, the merit that we do, it's okay. Okay, it's there, but it's usually not enough for them to go. But it's because with that merit, they trickle their own act of karma. See, like if you are Buddhist, you probably do a little a lot of time offering food to the monks and offering robes and all this thing. But you you don't memorize that, and maybe say you born is a hungry ghost. Yeah. Maybe during who knows how many years. And then your relative somehow uh, think about you, and then you know, now they dedicate. They maybe they're offering the food to the monks or to the poor, and then they okay buy this merit. May my friends such and such or my mother and father be getting this merit. You share this merit, and when when they hear that this merit, they recall of their own <laughs> action that they also done in the past. So that basically bring them up, you know, from that leave state of maybe hungry ghosts or whatever, you know, take a rebirth in the better realms of existence, become the, the deva or whatever. So this is this is because we are long time of samsara, we do a lot of good and bad things. But usually one act 
it will trickle another thing that you also do in the past as well. So we don't know what this talk has been done in the past. Now it's unfortunate he's trapped in this, but at least he have a chance to to do at his ability. So you take good care of him and you know, and he he's not in the position where he can receive your the merit either because he not know if you donate anything and dedicate to the dog, the dog don't know. He, he live on his own food. Yeah. It's only for the hungry ghost in that that can receive this this merit because they, they don't they can't do on their own. They rely on your your action yeah. and then they can take the merit and usually combine with their own merit and then you'll be able to get to the better destination. But for the dog <laughs> we just um, take care of them. Hopefully, that by take care of them, they can uh, have a at least happy, so they don't go and kill <laughs> or harm other being, which increase the time in the samsara. Uh, so if they don't do any bad, akusala, the akusala karma that they did in the past will usually come and then may, may help them. Uh, or you can train them. You know, we have a dog who uh, basically uh, actually he. He was born as a dog because <laughs> he was a very poor man and one time he was uh, uh, he was stay with a, with a very rich merchant and he see the, the merchant dog uh, live very luxurious you know got fed every every meal sleep in the air conditioned room and things so when he died he oh I be better for me to be born as a dog so he born he exactly born as a dog in, in that house. Uh, but when he born as a dog there, he 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 happened to meet the Pajeka Buddha at that time. Pajeka Buddha is uh, when the time is no Buddha, there was a called an individual Buddha who enlightened. So this dog basically very fond to the Pajeka Buddha. He come and uh, in the morning he lead the Buddha for the arms. Uh, so he do a lot of merit in that way. So in the next life he be born in the in the heaven. So sometimes you can train the dog to be to do the merit by by that. You know, usually leading the monk for arms and protect the monk. <laughs> you know, so I don't know. Just just uh, maybe get them used to the monastery. You know, <laughs> so they get some share of the merit. But at least they have some food for the, from the leftover, so they don't have to harm other living being and buy the fact We have a the dog and cat in our monastery. The cat loves to sit meditate. <laughs> Every time we meditate, <laughs> just walk and they sit on the monk lap. Maybe we, with, a, with a heat generator, they just want to get in the heat, you know, the heat thing, so they just sit on the lap. So we let them sit, yeah, and then they're very happy. And they're very looking forward to the meditation time. <laughs> just come and they can pick which one that they like, the uh, with laps and joy, and just sit on the lap. So I think if they do like that, then you know maybe shorten their uh, shangsala as, as an animal. Uh, but we have to accept in the end, people subject to their own karma. We can do that much. You know, we can just support the cause and condition, but it depends on on that individual what what they gonna do. So. Evening, Bhante. Uh, I have one question related to karma. I just would like, I just would like to know what should one do uh, before the last death process moment. Uh, one of my eldest brother, my eldest brother, for example, mm -hmm. uh, two days before passing away in hospital at Subang Jaya, he, he said he saw oh, ghosts coming after him. Was very frightened. And my late mother, 330 uh, years ago, before she passed away, uh, a few moments we passed away, she told us there are many ants. She mm. kept on seeing ants and ants and ants all over. And she was quite worried. Mm. What should a person do? Thank you, Bhante. Yeah, it's... Um, um, yeah, we, before, before we die, this is uh, what we call the, the karma. Uh, that we done in the past will manifest. Uh, there are certain like we call the karu kama, the heavy kama. For example, if you kill your parents, 
<laughs> then there's no hope that karma is very strong it will basically will re-emerge at that time and will send you straight to help nothing much we can do but uh, maybe what they could what the buddha do for like for example king achata Sutu, he killed his father uh, he have to go to hell for sure but because he also have a faith in the buddha and actually he's the one who sponsored for the first rehearsal of the tipitaka uh, so even that if he not kill his father he probably get enlightened the buddha say after he keep a teaching he said this this uh, king is uh, is unfortunate. Yeah. If he doesn't kill the, his father, he will be enlightened on this seat. But because he killed his father, he have to go to help. To help. But because he also do a lot of merit by sponsor the monks and all these things, so he eventually rather than go to the aweji, which is one kappa. You know, one kappa. How long one kappa is? Is ten with. Uh, See, 140 zero. Uh, so when you have six zero is million, right? Uh, one with six zero is million. And then one with uh, 12 is called what? Trillion, right? Trillion. So if it's million, then you have to say million, 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 20, 23 times <laughs> to have uh, 140 zero. So, but now you have the new unit, you have a trillion, right? So you have trillion, 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 trillion for 12 times. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that's quite a long time you're going to be stuck in hell. But because King Acharya Sattu uh, basically helped with the uh, Buddhism, so he shortened his, his time. I think he go to the Loha Kumpi. Loha Kumpi is where it's a floating uh, boiling uh, pan uh, he will be there for I think 20,000 uh, 20,000 years which is which is still long but <laughs> but compared to <laughs> trillion, 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 trillion is a lot better uh, the Buddha say almost like you doing a very bad karma supposed to go to the capital punishment but you are basically chained to maybe just a uh, <laughs> uh, very light penalty, maybe just uh, uh, get get in the school, not got getting out for few hundred years. So it's like compared to that, you know. so it's uh, sometimes you can't help it with this thing, but but you can make it lighter. Okay, so that's a, that's a heavy karma, but also the heavy karma on the light uh, on the positive side as well. For example, if you get jhana. And you can maintain jhana, then the last moment you will basically get that jhana and born into Brahma. Okay, so that is the heavy karma, karu karma on the both positive and negative side. But if you don't have that, then there was what what we call the 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 habitual karma. Right, you do what you do already do often during the day. Like some people do the chanting or sitting meditation or generosity you know they become very happy show of giving so that will pop up you know what you what you do routinely that will be powerful it will come and then do but if you don't have that then the last moment it's very important that's why it's very important to to pick the right person to die you know, with uh, because otherwise you'll be in a lot of trouble. There are some sutta uh, uh, in, in the Tipitaka mentioned one of the Arahant. He fully enlightened. But his, his father is a hunter. All his life he's been killing animals. And he know that his father's life is going to last, not last very really long, maybe, maybe another week. So he decided to, to help his father. So he bring his father in the monastery and put him in the bed facing the stupa uh, so he can see the stupa and then he will after he go for arm he have a he, he you when you go for arm if you have a parent father and mother you can you can give the food to them first and you eat last now this is allowable by the buddha so he basically take care of his parent feed feed him taking good care of him, you know, give him some massage or some cleaning and 
when he got a flower, he will give to in his father a, a hand to pay respect to the stupa. So he he do this for the last moment to make the, his father thinking of this uh, triple gem, the Buddha Dhamma and the Sangha. Then his work, I mean, it's a it's part of like a last moment of uh, Kusala Kama. So he rather than then fix it on the thing that the animal that he killed, he just now fix on the triple gem. So he reborn in heaven. So this is a thing that you can do if you if you are basically try to help somebody to remind them of the the triple gems that that is a can be the refuge if they never with generosity maybe you uh, suggest that they offering some maybe some dana offering something especially to the to the sangha yeah. buddha dhamma sangha something that they can connect to but because um, this is what provide the meaning in their life, you know? Because most, most people might not have that meaning yet. Yeah. If you can connect your meaning with the triple gem, that is the best because the triple gem is still there. Even you die, <laughs> the Buddha Dharma Sangha is still there. We will benefit for the rest of the generation. So it's that, in that, is a lot of power. But if that person is not religious, never do anything. Sometimes very hard, but you can, you can talk to them and then find out what, what do they proud of as, born as human. Maybe they proud of their, their occupation. Maybe their school teacher or the nurse or something. So there should be something that they, they proud of that this my life is worth, uh, something, right? So you have to find out. Maybe they have a family. They raise a kid, and the kid now, getting a job, having a family. You know, so you have to. To find the thing that is wholesome that that particular person do, and then remind them of that. So that only thing that you do because sometimes you can't force them either. You know, sometimes people are so. Uh, you know, like in Thailand, we have the word "butto butto." You know, right? so you whisper at the hand. Okay, that work for some people who regularly go to the monastery. You know, sometimes they they can remind themselves. Oh, yeah, they they've been doing. They go to the monk, they be happy to see the monk. So when you remind them of Buddha, they feel good, they feel wholesome. But for some people, they not never go to the temple. When you say Buddha, Buddha, they fight very agitated, you know. So you know, in that case, you just when when you're about to die, you have to rely on that person. You not use your own thing. You have to okay find out what is what is the best for that person. How can we bring the wholesome state of mind? Whatever thing, you know, if they don't like uh, Buddha, then maybe if they like classic, you can <laughs> turn the classical music on. Uh, at least maybe they're not get frustrated, so they can turn away mind away from the painful that that uh, the disease or illness, you know, because that can be very. If you have a painful, then it's unwholesome. You know, there are a lot of a lot of anger arise, and they, that that's not a good destination either. So you want to make them. Um, not you know, best thing is to be mindful and recall of the triple gem. But the second base is mindful of the kusala kama that is um, that you can bring it out and then maybe have some family photo, point them to recall. Oh yeah, you have a very really kid and the kids is now doing fine and you are you know be part of raising them up. You know. So you have to find something. You have to find some connection and then. Focus on that particular point. So there are certain thing uh, that you, when you die, you have to. Okay, first thing you have to be able to set up your your affair. You know, in terms of everything like your work. Somebody, you if you are preoccupied with your work, you have to assign your work to somebody else who can continue to do it for you. Uh, the money, you know, who gonna inherit your th your things. Because if you don't do that, when you die, it's gonna be a problem. You have to come back again into that dream and say, "Okay, I want. I don't want you to get that. I want you to get that." It's a lot of burden for you. So you should set up first, write up what what you want to give to who, basically. So, so you have to come back afterward. You can basically go to nibbana or whatever. Actually, if you can let go of everything, that is a final test for you. So set up your affair. Uh, uh, tell about what. People do, and then if you have any grudge, hold the grudge, and you you have to forgive. 
Otherwise, your mind will be trapped in that. Not for them, but for you. You forgive them. If you have debt for anybody, pay the debt. <laughs> Because otherwise, it's not good to basically be debt, and then you have to come back. But if somebody owe you, forgive about it. <laughs> Because it's not it's not worth it. You know, you can. Oh, I gonna have this money back. You're not gonna have that. You're gonna die. And what you do with that money anyway? You know. So let go, forgive. You you are have to prepare yourself for the next life. You know, this is not time for hold on to this thing. You have to let go. Even your body is not you now. You have to let go. We not to mention any external thing. Okay, so set. Uh, your affair, your uh, your work, your your heritage, uh, any debt or uh, thing that you owe or somebody owe you, and then asking for forgiveness. It's very important. Yeah. Get together the family member, say the thing that you will not have a chance to say again, and you regret that I didn't say when that person alive. Basically, asking for forgiveness. Okay, so whatever body, speech, or mind that I done uh, intention or unintentionally, may you forgive me, yeah. and then forgive each other. You know, preparing the flowering tray, uh, do that ceremonially. I think it's very important to have that ceremonial, and then maybe do some have a chance for them to do some dana. Maybe the last sangha dana, offering food, uh, rope or food to the monks or whatever. Uh, it can. Uh, can they can use that r a s t kind of memory to trigger whatever g u s l a karma connection to this uh, sangha, and then not try to you know you have to keep everything serene and uh, and not not agitate you know sometimes uh, they don't they cook up all these thing in the ICU and all these son and daughter or. Oh, Granny, c a n p a don't die. <laughs> so you you feel very agitated, and you you not able to let go. You know, so let them feel okay. You free to go. We can take care of ourselves. Don't worry. Just 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 go out, go on. You know? Let go of everything. Don't worry about us. We can take care of ourselves. So you should be able to 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 do that in the environment where it's quiet. Uh, people who can't make up their mind, don't let them in. You know, it's, it's very distraction. You know, it's just they're being quiet. It's better for them maybe to, if if they are, uh, the people who come to the monastery, you can do some kind of sitting together. Maybe do some chanting together. It's very powerful. Uh, type of chanting will recall you of the moment you come like this. You know, listen to the dharma talk. Do some chanting together. That is very wholesome. You can hold a person hand. You can even say something because even the person is gone, they they hear is still hearing well, so they can use. Sometimes they just wear you something. You know, they haven't said goodbye to any person. Maybe if you know, you let that person meet. Sometimes one day they meet that person, they know that person well. They just let go and they they can can live this life. So you try to make the worry or anything free of remorse, free of this kind of. Attachment as much as possible. Provide that that secluded condition for people to to go to the next world in the in the very um, serene and 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 way. So that that is the thing that you can you can do to the to the one who are about to die. And maybe you can if you are die of terminal cancer, for example, there's no way that you're gonna come back fully function. Maybe you should tell the doctor as well. The doctor should know that. See, Cause I, I was a doctor before, so I tell you the doctor. <laughs> the doctor job is have to prolong the life as long as possible. I used to be a doctor, so people can die, but not on my call. <laughs> <laughs> so, so because that 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 what they hire me for. See, and they they pay me for that. So I will put everything. You know, if you come, in, you're not breathing. I just put the tube in. If you're not. <laughs> Uh, your kidney stop working. I just poke the tube in, dialyze it. You so I, this is the thing that doctor can do. But for what? If you're gonna die anyway from terminal disease, you don't want to have that. You don't want to have this thing poke in your. It would be probably good for the doctor. You know, good for the hospital, <laughs> but it's not good for you. Huh? So you have to let the <laughs> the the doctor know that that is I'm re- I'm ready. <laughs> 
don't don't do anything uh, invasive. You know, oxygen is okay. Yeah. IV fluid is okay. Maybe antibiotics, <laughs> but probably that about it. You know, I don't want anything. You know, more uh, intrusive. Or you don't have to poke or anything. You know, I mean, you, you have to know if it the uh, terminal illness. It's still not gonna come back to normal. You can go in down, down, down. So you're gonna die from sooner or later. Better be died with the um, you know the consciousness and thing, and then you know, have the doctor know. And then okay, one thing you have to tell your your all your family member they have to have the same agreement. See, because as a doctor, if only one member doesn't agree, then he can sue you. So you not want to do that. So if any one of them agree, okay. I gonna do everything, so then the doctor have to follow that because this is a doctor job. So you have to come with consensus. Yeah. Have family members come together, and the one who who about to die have to tell you, you this is my intention, and then all the family will agree. Okay, that's that's a very important. Because what happens is sometimes, usually the people who far away, because they're not with the patient. The people with the patient they know how suffer the patient is, and they have to say okay. Yes, yeah, good that you can live uh, peacefully. But usually, the one sometimes like the daughter or the son who haven't been made for so long, they they start uh, they do the business abroad, and they just fly in, and they just they just say do everything, <laughs> because they are they are so far away. I think they want to compensate the fact that they're not with the parents. So this is the way of compensate. Okay, do everything, but. Do everything is not good for the patient, so you have to explain to them that this is not you know, maybe it's not the way you try to so uh, push for so long and then just, uh, suffering for a long time might not be a good idea because he better to be transmit to the next life in the because we know that this is not a most people unless you are Han, but most people are not so you have to prepare that person for the next state, which is more in terms of the quiet and set up the affair that I talk about. So because the body, the doctor can't do, I mean, <laughs> this is a limitation, right? I mean, uh, you're gonna die anyway for one day or the other. So this is the time come, and then if you understand the process of karma and next life, then you should be able to, to manage things that can help in terms of the the last moment and let the disease uh, leave the world with peace, peace of mind and all these things prepare. Okay? <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there are some questions about morphine. Um, yeah, I think morphine is a good painkiller. Um, um, you can, I think on my experience, you can use that uh, as, uh, because when you have a pain, uh, it's also not very difficult to maintain your state of mind. The pain is usually overwhelming and you have a negative or anger. So normally the morphine, if you are conscious, you can adjust by yourself. They have a drip where you can adjust how much you need, but, but they have a cap. You can't do it too much as well, but they, so you can do it. Um, I, I think it's, it's worth giving in terms of morphine, but, but some people uh, f uh, fear that morphine might interfere with their mindfulness. See, when you bombard yourself with morphine, your mindfulness is lost. And then the Buddha say, when you die with uh, delusion, without mindfulness, then it's not a good destination. So some practitioner say, oh, I don't want morphine whatsoever but i think i i would not adopt that strict position because when the pain comes it's just, it's really bad you know so you should you should be able to uh maybe not the pain enough for you to be able to be mindful of you know if the pain pain is so overwhelming then you can't be mindful of that pain so you can adjust the morphine in such a way that 
Of course, it's not going to completely go away. You know, some people use the morphine to basically stop breathing. Because if you too, do too, do too much morphine, you you can stop breathing and then you die that way. But it probably not a good way of dying in terms of Buddhist because you are you'll be in that cloudy state of mind. So if you understand the process of of, of dying, then you can adjust your own morphine in such a way that the pain is not so overwhelming. You can maintain mindfulness enough. For you to able to deal with that last uh, process, not to say, oh, I will not have morphine whatsoever. I don't think it's a it's a good choice. I think you should be able to use that in a certain way. This day they have this kind of. Uh, if, by the way, if you don't want to die in a hospital, that's also possible now. I think they have this team where you can go to supervise a house and then set up the thing. You know, if you need anything like oxygen or morphine, they can provide you with that. Maybe it's better to die at home. Because um, you surround with the family. In, in the old time, people die at home. Basically, you know, they they just uh, call family member together. They just put the candle at the end, and then you know that you know that we don't have any way of prolonged life. You know, so when the time comes, you just you just leave. You know? Not, I mean, it just. I think in, in the way, it's much more. In line with the Buddhism, more than this way, they, we we try to struggle, we try to hold on as much as possible. This is the concept of the the Western. They say you only live once, so <laughs> so, so if you only live once, then you try to make it as long as possible. But you not only live once; <laughs> you live for many many times. But okay, this life is precious. Is if you still make it, uh, if you practice, okay, is 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 uh, very important. But Uh, if the time come, then you should be able to to let go as well. So I think if you set up before preparing what you need, you know, contact with the hospital. You should let they send the team. Uh, you can manage to uh, have some family member around, and I think that uh, that is uh, the way. But you have to make this happen. By default, you will go directly to ICU. <laughs> you know, people will pump you up, and so you have to plan ahead. And this is what I want to tell people around you to know. Okay, this day I think by default, more than eighty or ninety percent of people will die in the hospital somewhere of this intervention. Uh, so, if you want things to happen, you have to to tell. You, know, you have to manage. You have to arrange for that. Good evening. <coughs> Good evening, Ajahn. Uh, happy Wesa. Happy Wesa, and thank you for the Dharma sharing. I have a somewhat more technical question, perhaps, probably an Abhidharma question. In your talk, you mentioned about how nibbana is uncaused, and I am trying to maybe think about that a little bit more. Ajahn, you mentioned uh, an analogy. You gave the analogy of how the path does not create or cause the city, mm-hmm. but but then. Um, if I'm thinking about a city in the world, yeah. the city itself is caused by maybe other things and mm-hmm. created by other things. So, so like the the manga leads to nibbana, but it doesn't create nibbana. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm, I'm thinking of like if there are no one practicing the manga, if there's no one practicing the path, would, would nibbana still be there? Because if if there's no one practicing the path, then there's no freedom from suffering, is there? So so I'm trying yeah. to think about that. Yeah. Um, The nibbana is always be there, but it might not be seen. But it might not be be perceived if there are no makkah. It's nobody practicing it. The nibbana is always there. It's it's harmless. It's unborn, undying. We just need. Uh, it's just because it's our problem. We have a suffering, and we want to to search for the unborn and undying. This this nibbana element. So we have to practice the the makkah pala. So when we develop the makkah, then we can see the nibbana. But again, nibbana is not something you can hold on to or grab as me and mine because it's unconditioned. Yeah. Yeah. So you are basically you are rising and passing away. But now you know that you are not you. <laughs> you are just becoming something else all the time because you not see nibbana. When we see nibbana, then it's better than everything. I mean, timeless nibbana is much better than samsara. Trapping in this cycle of unending rebirth, even the thing that cost your happiness, how long does it cost your happiness? It's just uh, waiting for suffering. 
Uh, so it's not real suf- it's not real happiness. The real happiness is nibbana because it's the end of su- suffering. Everything else is just disguise. Yeah. It's like disguise as happiness. But because everything changed, everything arising and passing away. So even the happiness is not, it's not the true happiness because it finally it's gonna pass. And when it passes, it becomes suffering, right? Yeah. So happiness is just the mistaking of our thing that we thought is going to bring us happiness, but it's not. That's why we trap it here. Uh, or if anything that did it to five khanda, sooner or later it will disappear. This is the nature of five khanda. Only thing is uh, nibbana that is not five khanda. So it's so it's it's always there, <laughs> waiting for us to to see. It's like the the old city. Where nobody sees, like the path is all gone, covered up by all the grasses. The Buddha is like the first one who discovered that path toward this ancient city. Yeah. And then, if nobody else walking that path, it will become covered with grass again, and then wait for another, who knows, eons, eons, and until the next Buddha comes and, and uh, uh, review the path. Uh, so, Nibbana is always there. It's just us that we are not able to to see it yeah, because we are trapped in this dukkha identify as me and mine yeah, is it my body is it my mind yeah. i see so if i understand ajahn correctly you're saying uh, nibbana itself is uncaused but the seeing and the perceiving of nibbana is caused by the by the yeah, path the makkha is conditioned and it takes a lot of condition to have the makkha that's why we try to make this f- eight uh, uh, the right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. This thing is all condition, and they have to be not only condition, have to be right condition as well. So it's it's a tough job to make that happening. So that's why it require almost it it require everything to understand nothing. <laughs> I mean that the whole thing is like that. And Nipana is nothing, it's no thing. Yeah? It's but we, we come, when you have things it's arising and passing away. But it requires everything. You, you have to put a lot of effort. You have to have a right feel, right speech, everything has to be right. So it's everything. That's why the monk we devote our life to it, you know. We we, we want to to see nothing. Yeah. Because that that who we are, we, we, we are yes, the me is just uh, your own making, and we trap in this becoming, on and on and on. So we want to, we want something more. So we have to create this this makkha. Yeah. So this is our work. Yeah. Sadhu, thank you, Ajahn. Thank you very, testing. Thank you very much, Ajahn Ton, for your skillful answers. Uh, brothers and sisters, let us say three resounding sadhus out of gratitude, Ajahn. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Ajahn, could we request uh, you to lead us in the sharing of merits? Okay, so what we do today by meditating, uh, listen to the Dhamma talk, uh, cultivate the right field is very uh, rather merit today, so we can dedicate to the the one who are our relative and friends who passed away, who doesn't have a chance to practice with us. Okay, so we can uh, follow me in terms of sharing the merit. Now there's a chance, the verses of sharing and aspiration through the goodness of this rising of this practice. May my spiritual teachers and guides of great virtue. My mother, my father, and my relatives, the sun and the moon, and all virtuous leaders of the world, may the highest force and evil forces, celestial being, guardian spirit of the earth, and the lot of death, may those who are friendly, indifferent, or hostile, may all receive the blessing of my life, May they soon attain the threefold bliss and their light the deathless. Through the goodness that arises from my practice and through these acts of sharing, may all desires and attachments quickly cease. 
and all harmful states of mind until I realize Nibbana in every kind of birth. May I have an upright mind with mindfulness and wisdom, austerity and vigor. May the forces of delusion not take hold, nor weaken my resolve. The Buddha is my excellent refuge, unsurpassed is the protection of the Dhamma. The solitary Buddha is my noble guide, the Sangha is my supreme support. To the supreme power of all this, may darkness and delusion be dispelled. Okay, now we do it in Pali. Because the being up there, they know Pali. If you do it in English, they might not know what we're doing. <laughs> so do it Pali is a, a common language that they use. And we also do it for the, you know, the, the Yama, the Lord of Death. So we dedicate to him every day. So next time you see him, you tell, okay, I'm already dedicated I'm to you. You know, give me the good place. Han tham yau tisana tithana kha tha yo panama se I mi na punya kame na upachaya kunutara Ajari upakara cha mata pita chaya taka Suryo Chantimara Chakuna Vantana Rapita Prama Mara Chaintha Chaloka Pala Chatevata Yamo Mita Manusa Chamachata Verika Pita Sape Sata Sukhi Hontu Punya Nipakatani Me Sukhang Chati Vitang Ten to Kipang Pape Tawo Matang Imina Punya Kamena Imina Utisena Cha Kippahang Sula Peche Vatan Hupatana Chetanang Ye Santani Hina Tamaya Vani Panato Mamang Nasanto Sapata Ye Vayata Chato Pawe Pawe Uchu Chitang Sati Panya San Leko Viriam Hina Marara Pantunoka Sanka Tuncha Viriye Sume Putta Tipa Varona To Tamo Nato Varutamo Na to pa che ka put to cha sang ko na to ta ro ma ma Te so ta ma nu pa ve na Ma ro ka sang la pan tu ma Sa tu sa tu sa Okay, so you can dedicate the merit to whoever you are connected to who love the beloved one passing away Brothers and sisters, let us bow three times and thank you for the revelation.